Companies of all sizes are having difficulty outrunning the outstretched arms of inflation. Big food makers, are, of course, are on that list as they battle through inflationary pressure, pressures in commodities and worker wages. On the positive side, big food is still seeing elevated demand for food eaten at home, a trend that really picked up during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. Let's talk more about these trends with the CEO of Frozen Food and Snacks Giant Conagra Brands, Sean Conley. Sean, always great to get some time with you here. I want to start off a little bit on a off the beaten path here. You noted in your quarter that sales of meat snacks, uh, I imagine that's largely Slim Jims, they were up close to 22% in the quarter. Do you think we're going to see a, a broader snacks business revival here as people go back to the office? Well, our snacks business has been on fire for about two years now as we really started innovating and getting behind it with some uh, inventive marketing. And as you point out, the Slim Jim business and our Duke's meat uh, stick business has just been absolutely on fire. So snacks is definitely very strong right now, even in the face of inflation and some of the price increases that you've seen. But it's not just our meat snacks business. Our popcorn business uh, has been particularly strong in our sweet treat area. We've got some great new products in Duncan Hines. Of course, Ready Whip is always a, a sweet treat that people love. These are all businesses that have been growing robustly. And, and as, as we come out of the pandemic and we see the at-home eating and cooking behaviors proving to be much more sticky than some originally forecasted, snacks is right there in the mix. Why? Because people are getting their entertainment at home. And when you get your entertainment at home, you need snacks. So very true. Sean, you mentioned uh, inflation. Uh, as a veteran of this industry, of the food industry, have you ever seen inflation at these levels or even approaching these levels? And, and when does it start coming down? Well, I've been doing this 30 years. And, you know, as a manufacturer, you realize that inflation is, is part of the deal. You got to deal with it. It doesn't do any good to complain about it. You just have to deal with it. I can't say I've seen it at quite this acute a level or as persistent as it's been. Uh, but these are typically cycles. I think the key is, what do you do when you're facing the adversity? And, and you, as I said last week at our earnings call, you have to have strong brands and you have to have strong innovation because that will enable you to take the actions necessary to try to recover some of the compressed profitability that you experience when the inflation first hits your P&L. And that's what we've done. We've taken that and we've seen our brands uh, perform very strongly and, and continue to grow dollars and in many cases, even grow units. And what that's showing you is that even at these modestly higher price points, in the context of the inflation that people are experiencing more broadly in their lives, the array of products that we're offering consumers are still a superior relative value versus other choices they have. And really, when you get this environment where this inflation is this acute, people are trying to maximize their household balance sheet. And what they really evaluate very carefully are the high ticket items. And one of the high ticket items is the expense they have eating away from home. And we've seen that has been one of the factors that has, has kept the in-home eating and cooking behavior very strong, even coming out of the pandemic. Sean, this is Emily here. Where are you seeing the most cost pressures right now? Is it in labor, the meat and agricultural inputs, or elsewhere right now? We have a vast portfolio, and we've seen just about everything we buy inflate over the last year plus. But in the most recent period, I would say the most acute areas have been our meat protein business, our dairy business, and our transportation expenses as well. You've all heard about a shortage of trucks, a shortage of drivers, et cetera. You know, for the last six months, those have been the areas I say that are most acute. Some of those areas are areas that are difficult to hedge. Uh, so you're dealing more on the spot market. And so you do experience uh, steeper inflation. And Sean, you talked a little bit about this. I think the word you use is wave. So you've taken your first wave of, of inflation related um, price increases. Now there's another wave coming, if I'm correct. You know, how much is that wave? And, and have you seen any consumers balk at some of these price hikes? Well, we've actually seen multiple waves already, and we've actually had to price for multiple waves. And we, we're seeing a new wave hit in our fourth quarter this year, and we will take additional uh, inflation justified action that will start to benefit our P&L in the first quarter of our, our new fiscal, which begins in June. And, you know, as, as we take these increases, we have to watch volumes very carefully because we have to understand elasticity of demand and understand what the consumer response has been. And the response thus far has been quite benign in terms of elasticity of demand and consumers trading out or trading down. In fact, our business remains incredibly strong, which is why we believe consumers are seeing these products, even at a modestly higher price, have superior relative value. If you look at three of our businesses, Healthy Choice, 
Bird's Eye Voila and Slim Jim, as you pointed out, these are three of our largest businesses. We've had significant inflation on there, and we've taken significant uh, justified actions to try to recover some of the compressed margins there. And not only have we seen the business remain strong, those volumes are up in the absolute in terms of unit volume on, on three of our largest brands. So the resilience of our portfolio is clear, and that is not happening by accident. A big part of that is this is a company that has orchestrated arguably one of the largest innovation transformations of its total portfolio over the last seven years. So consumers are finding these new innovations. These are modern products. They're provocative. Yes, they're at a modestly higher cost, but they remain an extraordinary value, and that's why they're performing so well. Speaking of products, Sean, it looks like you're making an under-the-radar move or a more aggressive move in the plant-based meat market. What products do you have coming out there, and, and how big is your overall plant-based portfolio? Well, plant-based uh, trend has been a big thing for the last couple of years, and we've remained very focused uh, from the beginning, putting most of our energy into our frozen space. We are the, the company that pioneered the kind of resurgence of frozen and said it's really not about the temperature state, it's about the food. And we've got to have high quality food there and we've got to have the right kind of varieties. One of the varieties that's really hot in the last couple of years is plant-based meat alternatives in the frozen section. And of course we play there with the Gardein brand. So we have continued to improve the quality of our plant-based Gardein innovations. Last year we launched a lineup called the Ultimate Lineup with Ultimate Burgers, Ultimate Chicken. And for grilling season this year, we've got the Ultimate Sausage line coming out featuring the new bratwurst. It is a phenomenal product. It's like cooking a regular bratwurst on the grill. Brian, I encourage you to try it for this, this upcoming grilling season. It's fantastic. Oh, I'm hey, sign me up, Sean. I'm, I'm ready to rock and roll. Lastly, before we let you go, you did tease in, in, I guess, an investor day on July 28th. Anything we should be looking out for there? Are you going to put out some five-year targets or anything like that? Well, the first thing you should look out for is we're going to move that date to July 27th, because I think other companies have a bunch of earnings calls on the 28th, so that won't be the best date. We're now shooting for the 27th. What we typically do there is for investors that aren't familiar with our story, first we'll ground them in who we are, where we've been, and, and how we've really changed the company. But of course, we're going to talk about what's to come, You know, what's to come in terms of growth, what's to come in terms of margin expansion, and ultimately, what investors always want to know is what does it add up to, and what's the new, new algorithm and the new outlook? Well, just feed them some of that plant-based sausage and give them some numbers and uh, we'll take it from there. I'm sure they will enjoy it nonetheless. Conagra Brands CEO, Sean Connolly, always good to see you. Have a great rest of the week.